Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hello and welcome home. Thank you for joining us on episode 131 of Welcome Home, a Disney Parks and Vacation Club podcast. I'm Tom. I'm here with Trevor. No Damon this week. Um, if you listened to last week's episode, um, you know, we decided after last week to just, you know, we just let Damon go. We just fired him. He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. As he as he's posting pictures from his uh, kids' swim meet. Yeah, course. it kind of ruined it. I was gonna do a joke about that, like just that we got rid of him, and then he goes and posts on the in the group that he's you know at a at a swim thing, and I'm like, yeah. thanks, Damon. He ruined my whole joke. <laughs> well, I said, told him I was gonna do it ahead of time, and he still you know. Yeah, which is par for the course. But but you know, speaking of you know being a dad, you know, since it is Father's Day this weekend, you know. Um, Obviously, we're recording this early, but does this give us a, a pass to do more dad jokes on the show? I mean, it, there's already a pretty good staple of dad jokes, right? I, I, mean, I, I know, but but I mean, you're there, saying you want to do more? There, there's a threshold that you know oh, we we can pass that. I mean, it may actually, we may get a lot of one-star reviews if we do that. <laughs> usually, usually I save all my uh, I save all my dad jokes for the Monsters Inc. Uh, the uh, Laugh Floor. Mm. Yes. You know, you, when you can send in the jokes by I get by text message, you know. So I always, I always pull out the best dad jokes of that one. So <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it's best to conserve our our, our dad energies yeah. <laughs> over the Father's I, Day weekend here. I've actually had a couple of the really bad dad jokes read uh, read during Laugh Floor before. So <laughs> awesome. Yeah. You know, just some of those really bad. I mean, you know, the standard ones, like, you know, what do you call cheese that's not yours? Nacho cheese, you know, like, yes. <laughs> like stuff like that. Uh, those those I, kinds of terrible jokes. But yeah, if you want to do more dad jokes, I think we, uh, we're we allowed to. Okay. Um, since so, it's, uh, since it's actually, one that I here, saw, so. there's, uh, there's a Obviously, once this come out, it comes out, it's going to be after Father's yeah. Day, right? Well, well, I mean, sorry. Too bad, folks. But <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you're not going to get all your dad jokes. Uh, you're going to get your dad jokes late. Yeah. 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 That's unfortunate for you. So, so, so I did, I did see one on, uh, there's a, a pet store nearby that, um, on their, their bulletin board outside, they, they put up base. I, I think the guy who runs it definitely is a dad and, and they have the dad jokes up there. And so the, the one that I saw today was, uh, um, what, what do, or what course do fish usually take when they're in school? Hmm. I don't think I know that one. What's the, what's the punchline debate. <laughs> i actually i have a dad joke app on my phone no joke that gives me like a daily dad joke i, f- I feel like i should remember more of them but you know it, I have it's hard there. right it is yeah. yeah i don't i don't remember all the dad jokes that's why i have a dad joke app is you know it tells me what the good dad jokes are also i find the best ones just happen in the moment and you don't have to preload them so oh yeah exactly yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah but those are the best ones right so exactly all right uh do we want to uh get into some listener questions yeah. So yeah. So no Damon this week, by the way. He yeah. he is at a swim meet with his kids. So <laughs> rightfully so. You know, I'm. I, I know he was. He was really happy to get back to actually. Yeah. Physically going there. So you know, I'm. Yeah, that I'm was happy definitely a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Me, me too. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I'll start with the first one. Um, so so James wrote in based upon changes in perks for DVC resale members versus direct purchase, i.e., the blue card. What additional changes do you think Disney would will do to further alienate or define DVC resale members as second tier members? Uh, hmm, I mean, I don't, what else can they actually do at this point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, to to be fair, I, I honestly don't think that the blue card offers a lot over well, not being right now. Re- yeah. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, there I know there's there's Moonlight Magic and and the uh, the lounge, but. Um, Oh, and I, I guess the the annual passes, um, and the discounts, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, there's, but but again, all all those things are very, you know, they've changed over the years, and they're very, um, they're incidental in that, you know, most of the time you can't take advantage of all of those things. Or I guess, I guess, sorry, speaking for myself, uh, I don't see a lot of those things as huge benefits because. 
I've some of them I've just never been able to take advantage of. So yeah, I know um, yeah. So I mean, what else would they do, or what else do we think they would do? I what could they do? I mean, short like the obvious one that everyone wants is for them to you know like hand out free annual passes or something like i, I mean <laughs> yeah. what else is there right can you imagine if they did that for blue card members and that was like a benefit like that would be a huge selling point for direct members <laughs> oh totally i mean they it, did that at one point that was a thing at one point yeah you're, you're right and uh so yeah you, yeah something like that would it would have to be like i i can see them doing other things like you know special events again more um not even like moonlight magic but they have some of the smaller events that they've done over time and like the wine tastings and stuff, I can see them offering more stuff like that. But for me, none of that really, I, I don't see that as alienating between blue card and non blue card members because none of it's like, well, it's, it's kind of like, it's like across the board, right? It's just like, yeah. Hey, anybody that's not, that's a resale member that does, that has the, you know, it's not even a card really, but that doesn't have the blue card. You don't get any of these benefits, right? <laughs> like yeah. that's pretty much how it goes. Right. So I don't know what other benefit they could take away besides top of the world. Right. Like that's the only thing you get as a resale member, <laughs> but that's really it. Mm, yeah. I guess, I guess if they did take away top of the world, but, but even like for myself, like I, I guess I've never gone, I, I've never seen top of the world as something that I have to go over and do. Like, yeah, like it's even, not like a must do kind of thing. It's just like a yeah. nice extra benefit to have when you can, you know, get over there. Right. Like, like that's the thing is, you know, it's a nice to have, but none of it's like, like if, if they said they're taking away top of the world lounge, I wouldn't be like, okay, that's it. You know, I'm done. Right. Like, I think so. I mean, I don't think anybody would, I don't want to say anybody because there's always somebody that would do something. Right. So I'm sure there's somebody yeah. that'd be like, that's it. I'm selling my contract. No, we're top of the world. It's over. But, uh, you know, I think most people wouldn't see that as a, uh, as a big thing, you know, it, it would be, people would be mad about it for sure, but I don't know if that would make people sell. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I guess we don't really have a, don't have a great answer for that one, James. Um, he did have a, f James did have a follow up question, which I honestly don't know the answer to this one. I don't know if you do, Tom. Um, yeah. He, he did ask if DVC resale members also get the purple ring when entering the parks. Do they? They do. Yeah. Oh, okay. They do. So, Although funny enough, I I always get the the purple ring, but my wife never does, which is weird because there's no reason for her not to. Like you know, she's on the mm -hmm. contracts, she's on the account, like she's on everything. So I don't know why she doesn't get it, but I do. She gets annoyed by it every time. She's like, "Oh, I don't understand why you get the the purple ring and I I don't." I'm like, "I don't know." It, it's entirely random because same thing between me and my wife is that there was a couple of times where I got it and she didn't, and then it went the other way where. She started getting it, and then and then there was actually one time we both went into Magic Kingdom in an afternoon, and we both got it. And it was like like I scanned mine, and I was going to be all like, "Yes, I got it." And then I saw hers, and it was like, "Oh, like, <laughs> or not like, but it was like, dang it, like I can't, we we can't, can't play that game. about it now." Yeah, because we both <laughs> yeah. had it. we both got it. So that's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah no, I mean, I, th I as far as I know, resale members do. So I yeah. I think you still get the purple ring. Although I did notice the last time I went, it's very hit or miss whether the cast member says anything about it, right? So, mm -hmm. like, I think the cast members are supposed to look at it and say, welcome home to you. But they really don't do that all the time. So, I, I, I've, I've had it happen a couple times. But I would say most of the time they don't. Cause, and listen, they, they got a lot going on, right? Like, I yeah. don't expect them to be paying attention to my, you know, to me scanning in and, you know, say something. That's They got enough going on. They don't need to, to make me happy. So... <laughs> I don't yeah. need that either. You know, it's not a big deal. <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I guess, you know, a cast member saying welcome home to me is not going to wreck me walking into no. any theme park. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How dare they? Right. <laughs> like, just, you know, go, <laughs> how many, I, I would love to know if anybody has gotten really like super crazy entitled about that and like gone to, gone to uh guest relations and complained like, excuse me, I am a DVC member. Okay, I want to be told welcome home when I walk through those gates. Like, I guarantee it's happened. I feel so bad for the guest relation people. <laughs> oh yes, I, you know, uh, yeah. That that I I don't even want to. You know, it's go happened too far into like, that, but it's a hundred percent happened. You, yeah, you know, you know, somebody has done that. You know, somebody has gone and said, you know, you know, hey, you know, the these cast members didn't smile at me the right way. Like, oh yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> that happens all the time, right? Yeah. 
I, I would I, I would read a book of just like former guest relation cast members like just telling their most ridiculous stories. <laughs> like you know, if I would read uh, a book of that. Yeah, if if you're ever interested in it, uh sometimes so there's a, a Walt Disney World subreddit. Um occasionally you will get ex cast members posting stuff on there. And yeah, it's pretty much what you think it is, is yeah, that, you know, they, they have to be very nice about it, but you know, some of the people that come to them with things, it's like in in any other business or in any other place in the world, you would, you would want to just turn around and go seriously, like, (laughs) like what's wrong with you? (laughs) Seriously. Yeah. Stop it. (laughs) Yeah. People are ridiculous. (laughs) Yeah. I used to have that. Um, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen that image in a while, but it used to get shared all the time. It was, uh, it was like an image of a cast member holding up a sign and somebody had photoshopped into the sign uh, entitled DVC member line starts here. <laughs> <laughs> and it was always a funny, I always thought yeah. that was a funny one, but I, I haven't seen that one posted in a while. I probably have it saved somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, give, give it some time, you know, things are still opening back up, you know, as, as we'll get into, or, you know, I'm sh- we'll talk about it more on the show, you know, things, things are getting back to normal and, that's a bit of a double-edged sword because normal means, you know, er- things are relaxing, but also that some people think that certain behavior is considered acceptable again, which is not. <laughs> well, and, you know, yeah. things are happening very quickly right now, right? Like everything yeah. is opening back up like rapidly. The The rules are changing very fast. So, um, yeah, it's it, and, you know, there were there are a lot of people rude during to the cast members during the pandemic stuff, too. So it just it, it's tough. Yeah. So, exactly. so, so, Jeremy, our, our, our old reliable Jeremy, <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoyed the nice, the look of a nice cut lawn. But since I started a lawn care service myself two years ago, I totally changed the way I see lawns now. Question: Do you now view all Disney stuff through the lens of show prep, or do you still enjoy things for the simple pleasure of them? Hmm. Um. Do you want to take this first, or? I, I mean, I'm not really sure how to answer this. I mean. <laughs> I, j- I get I guess I just get simple the simple pleasure out of things you know I don't I don't think I don't know what he means necessarily by show prep so so I guess the way that I interpret this is does he mean the show prep for our show like is that what he's talking about or is he talking about show for like the show of being in the park no I I, I think what he's saying is that when when you've spent enough time looking at Disney stuff it's like oh, yeah. when they release a new you know a new animatronic or something or a new effect. Or, or, you know, there's a new show, you don't look at it necessarily as, you know, wow, you know, that, you know, that really immersed me in the show. It, you start thinking of it from, you know, oh, I see how they did that. You know, they use this projection technique or they did this or they did that. And and you kind of, you kind of put yourself behind the scenes without being behind the scenes. I think that's what Jeremy's saying here. See- the first time I read it, I read it that way. But then when I read it th- the second time now, I'm just thinking to myself, I think he's saying, are we so immersed in it? Kind of like what almost Damon's rant last week. Mm-hmm. We're so, are we so immersed in it that we can't appreciate it as much? Because it's just like every time we see a Disney thing, it's like, oh, that's for the show. Or can we just enjoy them? Because it's the the pleasure, the simple pleasure of them existing. See, that's how I'm reading it now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that, I, yeah, that, that's, that's fair too. I, I guess for myself, um, I don't, I, I don't see everything as show prep. And, um, for, for me, there's a bit of an ebb and a flow to it. The, I will get really heavy into stuff for a while and then I will back off and I will, um, and, and it's a deliberate thing is that I, I will stop because I know that, you know, going too far down into, you know, you know, looking at this stuff every day, you know, you know, Disney stuff in, in general, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to also tie this partly into, to, um, to Jeremy's follow up, which is, uh, um, you know, doing a Disney podcast every week. Um, he asked if it either increased, decreased, or not affected your general interest in Disney TV movies and parks. Um, for me, that's all kind of the same thing is that I go through phases where, you know, I'm, I'm looking at stuff in the parks, I'm watching, vlogs i'm i'm really into it um same thing with disney plus and and disney movies is that you know for a while there earlier this year i was really into disney plus like i I was hunting for stuff i was just you know trying to get as much of it as i could right now i'm not as much into it and it's not that i'm like i'm done with it it's just i knew i know for my own 
head and my own sanity is that I had to just find something else to focus on for a little bit. And the thing about that is that, um, you know, me going off and looking at something else for a while, it kind of gives me fresh eyes for, for Disney or I don't know if that makes sense or not, but, but like my thinking on it is that when you're not in it as much and then you come back to it, it's like, you kind of, you give yourself a, a chance to mentally reset and not, not immediately go to all the stuff that you had previously been, um, focused on. Like, like you kind of go back to almost to scratch, like even things yeah. like, like I love, you know, the Tiki room. I love the Polynesian, but you know, sometimes it's like, like I'll listen to the Tiki room soundtrack like 50 times in a week. And then it gets to a point where it's like, okay, I can't listen to this anymore. Like I'm, I'm sick of it, <laughs> but, um, but then I'll take a break and then I'll come back later. Like, like I'll, I'll stop listening to it for, for a while, you know, a couple of months or whatever. And then I'll hear it again. And then I'm like, oh yeah, you know, this is, you know, I love this. This is what I like. Right. So yeah, it's like absence yeah. makes the heart grow fonder kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's a, there's a balance there for yeah. me, definitely. But the podcast itself hasn't made me less or more interested. I mean, I think I definitely read more stuff, right? But it, it doesn't, it hasn't changed my interest level. I, I, and I will say like when I'm writing the show, there are times where, and I'll, you know, take you behind the scenes for a moment. I, I look at a couple sites and I, I will, um, kind of just open a bunch of tabs, you know, just like open all the tabs of what the stuff I'm interested in. And sometimes I'll open tabs of stuff. I'm like, oh, we're not going to talk about this on the show, but I just want to read about it. Cause I'm kind of interested. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I know the show is not going to be interested in it, but I want to check it out. You know, <laughs> yeah. like a good example of that is, um, the glass windows that they're using for the new uh, creation shop at Epcot, right? I'm like, okay, well, how much, you know, mileage can we get out of talking about glass, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but I wanted to read, but I was somewhat interested in it. And, and truthfully, it's pretty cool. Like, I don't know if anybody else saw this, but it's it basically like, depending on how you look at it, depending on how the light hits it, it's different colors and it changes colors. It's kind of cool. But, yeah, you know, I- it's, it's also not a topic we can really talk about on the podcast. <laughs> it's very visual, you know? Yeah. And, and, and you're right. That, that's the thing is like, same thing for myself is I will, I will go down, like I said, rabbit holes about, you know, I'll, I'll read stuff about, you know, particular attractions that, that I really like, or I'll read about, you know, Disney history stuff. It, it's totally irrelevant to what we talk about data or in our day to day conversations, both in the group and on the podcast. But, um, yeah, it's like you said, it's more from my own interest and more that I just like consuming that stuff every once in a while. But, but it's also, you know, if, if I told you that I do this stuff every week, that's a lie. Like I, I will, sometimes I'll be like hard, hard into it for a couple of months and then I'll take a couple of months off. And, and, you know, my wife can attest to this too, because she'll be like, you know, oh God, enough about the Disney stuff already or enough about (laughs) this stuff. And then, and then other times she'll be like, you haven't looked at this stuff in a while. Are you not like what's going on? And then, but she's kind of figured it out that, you know, this is just how I work mentally is that I have to kind of, I, I have to keep my attention in different areas to stop myself from going crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I get yeah. that. I get that. No, I, I mean, I, I understand it. I, I feel like I'm always immersed in it because I can't really get away from it. Right. Like I need to pay attention to it, uh, you know, write the show and all that stuff too. So it's, it's hard to not be immersed in it, but well, I, I would also say this is that, you know, back when we started the show, um, I think y- you, me and Damon all kind of had the same conversation that, you know, the reason that we started the show is because we were already doing a lot of this stuff. We were already yeah, doing yeah. a lot of the reading and, you know, you know, you know, figuring stuff out about the parks and, you know, Disney in general. So, um, so yeah, I, I think the, the podcast was a result of that, but yeah, it sure. doesn't, it doesn't affect or, doing that stuff doesn't affect the podcast. Like it's, yeah. it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree with that. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. So yeah, I, I want to read Chris's question. Cause I actually, yeah, go for totally it. agree with this. So, <laughs> it's not really a question. It's more of a statement. 
Uh, somewhat inspired by Damon's speech, I was wondering if too often we as affinity group members can't see the forest for the trees with Disney, uh, starting things like, you know, starting petitions over noodles, complaining about boo bash events, disliking everything Bob Chapek does. Uh, too often we seem to forget that Disney needs to appeal to a massive, much more casual audience for sustained growth, which is why feeding in, uh, IP into the parks is necessary in the first place. Would love to hear your thoughts and feelings on this. This is exactly how I feel about it. I, and I like, I understand where Damon's coming from and I understand wh- what his comments were about, but I, I do think it's like if they, they buy star Wars, right? The first thing that li- like literally everyone thinks is, okay, well they're going to build a star Wars land of the park. Right. And they just kind of have to, like you just, you can, you wouldn't imagine them not doing that. Right. <laughs> like, cause they, ha- they just have to, like that's too big of a property and too, you know, these are things that they have to do now do i agree with the idea of everything has to be ip not necessarily right like i i I do miss some of the original stuff right but and i don't think they should infuse ip into everything like i I don't think you know making uh you know there's been rumors for a while that they're gonna turn the uh the wave uh, over the contemporary into like an a a, a, um incredibles restaurant it's like do we need that probably not (laughs) you know what i mean like that's not necessary to me but yeah i also get what they're doing though too i mean if they have a movie that makes a billion dollars and is widely viewed you you want to it's it's all part of being part of that huge corporation you know is is you have this movie you have this property that's popular already you know it's popular so now we put put it in the park and now you have to go visit it in the park and like I, i get it i get why they're doing it and listen you we can say what we want about this but disney it's not like they were like that attendance was going down right (laughs) like it was going up and more and more people were going to the parks to the point where they were too crowded so it's not like it's an unsuccessful strategy right (laughs) so i don't know i i mean the again the thing is is that um yeah if if you think about it the amount of non- IP related attractions versus IP related attractions is really, it's really small at the end of the day. Oh yeah. And, and, and again, you know, let, let's, let's just take a step back here. It, like again, you know, totally getting where Damon's coming from specifically to star Wars and Marvel. Um, I agree with him that it's getting, it was getting to a point where it's a little too much, like, like the Marvel and the star Wars stuff they're they're pushing it a little too hard and eventually it's going to hit a critical mass and it's going to break. Like, like they'll realize that they can't, they can't keep that running forever. Um, but you know, I've said this before, you know, going back the, the whole thing when Disneyland first opened, the, the crowning piece of Disneyland is Sleeping Beauty's Castle, which was based on the movie Sleeping Beauty that was coming out at the time. Mm-hmm. So they were, they were already doing, you know, hey, we're, we've got a movie coming. Here's an attraction based off of this movie. So, so to say, you know, they're, they're never going to get away from that. Like that, that's, that's a fundamental part of the park. What I, I know Damon's talking about is, you know, once they got past that, there was, there was definitely, um, there was a, f- um, a phase there where, you know, they, they weren't, they were trying to get stuff into the park, but they were, you know, they weren't pumping out movies as fast as they are now. So they were just trying to, you know, you know, Walt already had some ideas in his head around haunted mansion and pirates and, and, and a bunch of other attractions like the people mover and Epcot and all that stuff. So, you know, he was just kind of acting out what he already had in his head. The problem is, um, and here, here, here's a bit of a of dangerous thinking around that. You say you want original, um, original stuff in the park, but what you know? Who's designing it? Is it like all all the stuff that came from Walt Walt Disney originally? Like even Haunted Mansion was you know a couple of Imagineers, but it had that that fundamental base of what Walt Disney wanted to do. The thing about re- releasing something now that's non-IP, um, it's 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 very hit and miss. Like it it, yeah. it could be that you know they they totally missed the mark on everyone's like this is the dumbest attraction ever, <laughs> like Superstar Limo. Yeah, exactly. Great example. You know, you yeah. know, totally missing the mark, right? So so I can see why they're a little bit gun shy to do that for sure. And then so so you know it's- the other way to do it is you know you release. Uh, an IP, you know, and, and, and to be fair, you know, the whole Marvel and Star Wars things, because they're, they were bought pre-established IPs 
on the flip side, you know, he had something like Frozen that, you know, that was an original thing that Disney did and it went through the roof. And they didn't obviously did not expect it to, right? Like that was <laughs> like they I don't think they expected that movie to become what it became, right? Yeah, I mean, initially and then once, you know, they figured out really quickly that they had to get on the train or, you know, they were going to miss it, right? Absolutely, um, yeah. So so the thing is is that, you know, to again talking about this whole thing around, you know, you know, appeal and, and, you know, too many IPs and everything, you know, this is, I think this is just the, the formula that Disney has figured out. And I think this is something that, you know, we all have to kind of be okay with is that, you know, that they're going to use media to kind of test the waters with people. And then, you know, if it makes sense, then they can push something to the park. That's not to say you'll never see just an independent attraction show up at the parks again, but you know, the, this is kind of a tried and true formula, right? You know, you you build you build a world first. People get hyped about it, and you say, "Hey, we're going to give you a physical representation of that world." They're already sold on it, right? It's the smart business decision, too, right? I mean, because you you don't want to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on something you don't know is going to work, right? Like if yeah. you know, even if even if like even if that Spider Man ride is not that great, people are going to still want to go on it because it's Spider Man. <laughs> like, you and, know what and, I mean? and and that's the thing. It, like, like also to to Chris's point about you know Disney does need to appeal to a a, a massive, much more casual audience. Keep in mind, it's not even a matter of appealing to a casual audience. It's appealing to a different audience. We are yeah. we are an audience like like DVC and and people who you know go to Disney on a regular basis. We are we are a very specific audience. We are we're hardcore. Yeah. For for Disney. But and there we want is nothing also, to change ever, and that's a problem. <laughs> like, and, and, but you know. but then on the flip side, there is people out there that are just as hardcore about Spider Man and Star Wars and Marvel and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. That, you know, it it's not fair to say that, you know, my point of view should detract from their ability to enjoy what they want to do. I right? mean, like Trevor, how many people do you know? That had no interest in going to a Disney park, but then they build Star Wars and they build Marvel and all of a sudden now they want to go, right? Like yeah. that's that's a thing, right? And that's and that's part of why building Star Wars is smart. It's it's not necessarily for us, but I mean, like I, I said on the podcast after Damon's Ranch, my sister's going to the park this week and literally just going to Hollywood Studios to go on uh Rise of the Resistance. Like that's it. Like and lots of people do that. And you know, my, 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 my a buddy, my, my best friend is he's really into Marvel. And he was like, so when are we going to go to Disneyland and check out Avengers campus? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, and that's, that's what they're trying to do here. And I, it doesn't mean that they need to alienate, you know, the, the hardcore fans, they need to appeal to us too. But I do think that there's a lot of people that are, are very much into those IPs and, and they're very, very popular. Obviously they make billions of dollars and, and why wouldn't you put them in the parks? I get that. At the same time, I do understand the idea I, I of wanting more original things. Like we got used to a lot of that, but to your point, Trevor, the IP stuff has been around always, right? Like it's never yeah. not been there. <laughs> like it's always been there. So, and I, I get it when, when you had like a place like Epcot where pretty much nothing was IP driven, right? At, at least at first, everything was pretty much original stuff and people really liked that. And it's still mostly that, right? There's, there's Frozen in there and then you have Ratatouille coming in and then, and, you know, you still, uh, what, the Seas with Nemo and Friends? Like, I think those are the three that I can think of. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy coming. So, but before that, there was very little in yeah. Epcot, right? And, and actually, and, and, you know, thinking about in recent years, I just realized, you know, Soren's a good example of yeah. uh, an independent ride. Yeah. So, so it's not even that long ago that I know Soren's, I mean, Soren is getting kind of old, but, you know, th they still do that kind of stuff. I think it's just right now, you know, D Disney realized that, hey, you know, Star Wars and Marvel are like, they're, <laughs> They're billion, like multi-billion dollar industries. Like exactly. you have entire comic conventions just dedicated <laughs> just to those. Why would they, why would they miss the boat on that? It, oh, just I because mean, it's, yeah. Yeah. If they came out and said that they, they weren't going to build a Star Wars park, their stock price would drop by significantly. Right. Cause like as soon as they bought that, it was funny. Cause I remember they were taking a lot of criticism. They're like, well, you know, this from, from shareholders, like, oh, how are they going to make that up? I'm like, you kidding? They're going to make up that in like two movies, <laughs> like, you know, and then they build the parks, of course, and, and all that. I mean, the, the, the lands and all that. And of course they make up for it there, but it's, you're right. There's whole industries built literally around just those two franchises. And we also have to remember too, like up until like, Iger came in they really didn't have that many they had a, some ip but they didn't have a lot 
I mean, you know, they had a fair amount, but not enough, like, not what they have now with between Marvel, Pixar, and 20, 20th Century Fox and, and uh, Star Wars. Like, they didn't have all that stuff in, until Iger came around, right? So before that, they just really had the classic movies and the classic animated stuff, which isn't wasn't nothing. But compared to, like, some of the other studios and some of the other places, it, it wasn't nearly as much. If it's, I was actually, it's funny that we're having this conversation because I was just listening to the... Um, Imagineer podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know if you've listened to that one, but I, I kind of want to get that guy on here, but um, because he does some interesting stuff. But he was just, he was talking about that in the podcast. That's why I bring it up. Is that when they built like Hollywood Studios, they didn't really have a lot of IP at the time, right? So like they that's part of why they brought yeah, that, MGM in because they needed the IP. Yeah, and, and yeah, I was going to say that that's the thing is that Hollywood Studios and California Adventure are are basically the the same park. I shouldn't say basically. I mean, there is there is definitely differences between them. That they were built at the same time, and yeah, you could definitely see you know the difference between East Coast and West Coast. You know, on on the on the West Coast, they didn't have any IP, and they were they were trying, and it was not working well at all. Like like yeah. the the initial inception of California Adventure was not a good concept, and and then yeah, same thing with Hollywood Studios. You know, they did the same thing, but the only thing that that helped Hollywood studios along was the fact that, yeah, they had the partnership with MGM that brought the the park up to at least a level of um, being, being able to identify it as anything other than um, I, I don't even want to call it a basic theme park. Like, like yeah, I, yeah, I hate yeah. to say it, but California adventure, you know, somebody, someone's going to kill me for this. No, it's, it's true though. It, I mean like the kind of rides that they had and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was pretty basic and <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> no, I, was, I yeah. think that's totally true. I, you know, it's interesting. I, I was listening to this episode and he was doing great movie ride. And uh, I, I very rarely listen to anything where like I learn a new fun fact. Like I, I mm-hmm. feel like I know most of the fun facts at this point. But somehow I didn't know that Great Movie Ride was originally a concept for Epcot. Had no idea about that. That Great Movie Ride was actually supposed to be part of an Epcot, a part of Epcot. It was supposed to be a whole land devoted to like movies. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, "Well, why would we do? Why would we put this as a land when we, it should be a whole park?" Like literally, that was what happened. And I was like, "What? I didn't know that that was part of Epcot originally." And they decided it didn't fit. Yeah, it's I, new news to yeah, me. Yeah, that's that that's weird because that that does not jive with me at all about Epcot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be like a movie centric or an entertainment land, I guess. I, I, I had no idea, and then I also huh. didn't know. I, he also mentioned in, in there too that there were actually supposed to be four Wizard of Oz, Oz scenes in the Great Movie Ride, but um, they I guess their deal with MGM only let them have a certain amount of minutes. <laughs> per hmm. uh, per property and and the four scenes would have gone over that so they had to change it those are the two things i really learned listening to that i was like that's really that's, interesting yeah it, it's and and you know this actually goes back to what jeremy was saying about you know you know enjoying stuff versus you know or, or you know going going into show prep versus just enjoying things is that you know knowing this kind of stuff doesn't you know you know, I think about it, but I would, you know, if Great Movie Ride was still a thing, I would yeah. still just get on it and be like, "Yeah, I'm here." Like, <laughs> <laughs> see, I like to see. I like to know how the sausage is made, right? You know, like I, I like yeah. the, I like the, the to see like how these iterations come. Because another thing they talked about in this podcast, and I knew this, but I didn't know the extent of this. The reason why uh, that Alien was in that ride is that they originally licensed it for to to put, you know, and I knew that they originally had licensed it to put it in uh, extraterrestrial and decided not to. But I didn't realize that that's how it ended up in the Great Movie Ride. It's because they already had it licensed. And they were like, oh, let's throw it in Great Movie Ride. Hmm. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, okay. Well, I, I knew that that was originally supposed to be over in you know in Magic Kingdom. But I didn't realize that they just had already made the deal. And we're like, hey, why don't we throw it in Movie Ride? <laughs> so Did, anyway, fun facts today. Yeah. Uh, extraterrestrial would have been way cooler if it was actually alien. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that aside. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, no, of course it would yeah. have been, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, absolutely. let's. Uh, so yeah, I think we we kind of, or uh, Chris, I hope we answered maybe uh, what you <laughs> what you were what you were asking or what what our thoughts and feelings are on this. Um, yeah. But I mean, listen, I mean, like, the, there's yeah, nothing we, to we stop could probably them. spend another hour going. Yeah, on, but we could do a whole episode on just on this. But I mean, yeah. like, there's nothing to stop them from reversing course. Like, right? It doesn't always. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like this forever. Like, they can they can start doing more original stuff. I'm sure. But it does seem that the corporate edict at, the, at this point is 
we have all this IP. We paid billions of dollars for it. Let's put it into the parks, you know? And, and I, I think it, you know, it's also, you know, not just having the IP, but I think it's, you know, Disney being smart with, um, you know, I'm sure Bob uh, or uh, Bob Iger probably realized, like you say, you know, back when, you know, when he first started with all this, you know, the, the big IPs that Disney was known for was the Disney princesses. Yeah. Right. You know, it was, oh, Disney. Oh, that's kitty stuff and princesses. Right. That was, that was the entire, like, this is all Disney does. And I'm sure he was going, well, no, wait a minute. You know, there's, you know, there's all kinds of other people out there that we can, you know, get into the parks or identify with, yeah. but you got to get the right IPs. And I'm sure that kind of started him down that path of, you know, figuring out, you know, Hey, you know, getting Marvel, getting star Wars, like those are, those are a big, those are big areas that, you know, people are very passionate about. And now it's, Hey, you know, star Wars is, or, or no Disney is, you know, star Wars, Marvel and Disney princesses and Mickey mouse. Like it's, yeah. it, it covers the whole gambit of, you know, you can, you can go there and not, um, it, it gets rid of the stigma, I guess, around, you know, you know, I guess 15 years ago, if, if I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to Disney, people would go, why? That's a kiddie park. Like, well, that's another good point, too, right? Like, <laughs> Star Wars, Marvel, you're appealing to teenagers there, right? Like, you're not. Yeah. It's exactly what you're talking about. It, it's it's also bringing in a different group of people. It's a different if a different age group that that is now interested because that exists. Right. So while, while they might not be interested in Frozen, they are interested in Chewbacca. Right. <laughs> like, and and so. I, I wouldn't even limit it to teenagers because it's a lot no. of people, you know, our Adults. age. Yeah, exactly. That, that grew up with this stuff and are going, you know, you know, yeah, I want to I want to see Chewbacca. Yeah, I want to go on a Star Wars ride. And, um, you know, it's not the teenagers that have the money at the end of the day. <laughs> well, <laughs> Just saying. And, and, truth, and truth be told. <laughs> You know, the same people that I feel like complain about this are also the people that don't like Marvel or Star Wars, and that's okay. <laughs> like, I know Damon yeah. likes Star Wars, but he likes the old Star Wars stuff, right? And there's a lot of the new stuff, and Damon's also not into Marvel. So, like, I get it. It's funny, though. We did get a five-star review just from Damon's rant, which is hilarious. <laughs> and he did have a couple people agreeing with him, and that's totally fine. <laughs> like, Which is... And that's good. That You know, I'm, yeah, I'm glad. Sure. I, I, you know... At no point did, did either you or I disagree, but, you know, sure. the point that I want to make is that, you know, and, and we've said this multiple times, is that it's okay for all of us to have our own opinions on this stuff, and it doesn't make it right or wrong, which I, I think is why things work here as well as they do, is because, you know, we do feel, you know, comfortable enough to, you know, voice an opinion that may not be the popular opinion, but everyone else is thinking it. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I do appreciate like when I see the five star reviews that are like, I'm leaving five stars for Trevor and Tom. Uh, Damon's wrong all the time, but they still gave <laughs> yeah. us five stars. And like, listen, you can think that Damon's wrong all the time. That's fine. Like, I think Damon's wrong all the time, too. I'll write reviews that say that, <laughs> but, <you> know, <laughs> especially since he's not here right now. I can say these things. But um, <laughs> but, you know, like you wouldn't care if you did tell him. <laughs> I just think it's funny when yeah. people get mad about it. You know, it's like, why are you getting mad about it? Like, don't get mad about it. You just disagree with them. It's fine. Like, yeah. you don't need to. We all don't need to agree on everything. So anyway. All right. Yeah. Dan, all right, I like Dan's question. You want to read Dan's question? Yeah. So, so Dan asked, how do each of you do fireworks in the parks? Do you line up an hour before to get a great view, book a dessert party, scramble to find a viewing spot, or do what I do and skip them to enjoy the short lines on rides? <laughs> hmm. I like to go late and throw elbows, you know? Just, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> just bump my way through everybody. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I, but but kind of not. <laughs> so, so uh, I've I've done all of these things at various points. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think... Um, definitely when we first got started, we were doing the, you know, finding a place in camping for an hour. I actually remember being at, uh, in Disneyland, um, we went, so we, or we knew fireworks were going to be starting in like 45 minutes. So we went to Jolly Holiday, which is in about the same position where Crystal Palace is in, D in Disney World to help give you an idea of, you know, where it is in relation to the castle. Um, so we went to Jolly Holiday and we just like, we, we bought like a cupcake and we sat there for 45 minutes, like nursing this cupcake because we wanted to make sure that we, you know, we kept the table and that nobody could question whether, you know, why we were just sitting there. 
Um, and then, yeah, you know, we, we watched from, uh, you know, from the table at, at Jolly Holiday. Um, outside of that, um, I think every other time we've ever done fireworks or, um, or like nighttime parades, we've always made sure that we've done a dessert party or, a um, Disneyland used to actually have, uh, you could buy, it was like a lunch ticket. So you would buy, you would buy, um, a meal and then they would give you a pass to, um, uh, paint the night, which was the nighttime parade. So then you would take that pass and you would go to, there was a designated seating area for the parade. So same kind of thing. Yeah. So we, so yeah, we, we've always liked, or that's definitely my preference is to, to book a, a, um, to book a dessert party specifically for fireworks. And then because of the fact that I'm usually there for a week, you know, we do the one night and then the rest of the time I'm exactly like you, Dan, I'm like, you know, I'm nowhere near fireworks. I'm going on every ride or, um, alternately I'm actually sometimes leaving the park, you know, as fireworks are starting or as, as, uh, or, or just before. Oh, so you're so bailing before the fireworks even go? Like you're, you're yeah, out of there? Be, be, and, and because I don't want to, so, so I'm either, I'm either leaving before fireworks or I'm waiting until well after fireworks to leave the park because I don't want to have anything to do with the crazy crowds that try to get out, like right as fireworks finish. Cause it, it always happens, right? You know, the, the people, people finish with the fireworks and then, and then they're like, okay, I'm done. And then it's just a wall of people outside of the exit right yeah exactly yeah so so that's me well, uh, how do you do it tom i uh i mean i've done i think i've done all these too you know so so which one is your preferred though i, I guess when it comes to fireworks what do you like i'll, ta- I mean, I'll tell I'll, you yeah. i'll tell you what i don't prefer i i don't want to show i don't like lining up an hour before like i'm I'm not into that right like right i also am not the person that needs to find the perfect viewing spot right i just don't i don't need to find the the best spot doesn't matter to me so i, I as long as i can see the castle and i can see the fireworks which you can see them from a lot of places right like i don't need to be centered and like be good i do like the dessert parties but they also are pricey and mm-hmm. you know not always the best viewing spot either truthfully <laughs> like uh so you know i i i guess i'd prefer coming at the end like towards maybe like a half hour to 15 minutes early and grabbing a spot that's probably the earliest i'll do so you'll just you'll just walk up somewhere nearby and just kind of stop and watch yeah. the fireworks like in frontierland or wherever if it makes sense yeah exactly okay yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, we cool. usually will go to the hub, you know, somewhere in the hub there. So, yeah. Well, I mean, t- to your point, you know, though, you you know, there, there's lots of like over towards um, not Fantasyland, but like Tomorrowland or even over near Liberty Square and whatnot. Like you can still quite clearly see the fireworks. Yeah. And you don't necessarily have to be see, in the hub. <laughs> I, I like, though, like that show, like Happily Ever After, to me, I feel like you got to be in the hub watching the the castle, right? Because it, the fireworks are great, but that show is so enhanced by the projections and all the effects that happen in front of the castle. Like, for me, I don't want to watch the fire. I'd almost rather not watch the fireworks at all if I'm not going to watch it from that spot. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm not going to stand on the beach at Grand Floridian and watch them because I, I just don't want to. Like, I want to see it at the castle. That's, that's how I'm my only thing or so i've i've watched them many times from the beach at the poly and but that's only because i've seen it enough times that i like it like i can watch the fireworks and the fact that they pipe the music in helps um i don't necessarily need the the projections on the castle because i know them well enough that i don't need to see it every single time <laughs> Like I, I yeah, yeah I, I, kinda, I get it, I get it, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. I kind of played in my head, basically. <laughs> I don't know. I just like the whole show, you know. Yeah, that's. I want to see the whole thing. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about it. But should, we should let's do our first ad, and then we'll do our last two questions after that. All right, sounds good. Our, yeah, our first ad this week is DVC Resale Market. Uh, DVC Resale Market, a world of DVC company, is the leader in the DVC resale industry with 13 former Disney Vacation Club guides and three former Disney Vacation Club quality assurance managers. If you're thinking of buying DVC, browse the largest selection of DVC resale listings anywhere with DVC experts on hand seven days a week to answer your questions. If you're thinking of selling, turn to the friendly professionals at DVC Resale Market, where over 98% of listings sell within 30 days. 
In 2020, DVC Resale Market helped over 3,600 families join or add on to their memberships. Go to dvcresellemarket.com or call 1-844-DVC-PROS. That's 382-7767. And when you speak to them, please be sure to let them know that Welcome Home sent you. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So Francisco asks, you're an Imagineer. You've been given the green light to improve one ride in the WDW parks. Which ride are you choosing and what changes do you make? So easy. It's like the easiest question ever. Figment. Really? Figment. You go, to, hmm. you, you go to Figment and then you just... You don't even need to do anything. Like, this is going to be the easiest thing ever. You just put it back to the original. <laughs> like, just go back. Just make it the original. That's all you need to do. Mm, and then you market no, it as retro. You're good. <laughs> well, you, you don't think that... I mean, there, there's an opportunity there to utilize, you know, some newer yeah, yeah, yeah. technology for something like that. No, no. Upgrade the technology. Yeah. Make, yeah. you know, do better with the lighting and the, you know, do all the fun things that, v- like, they Visual did effects Snow White. can yeah. be upgraded. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do all that. But you just make it to the original version like i you know the original version was popular people loved it i so i'm i'm all i they need to i like figment i'll still go on it like i don't i'm not one of those people that's like oh this is the worst ride ever why would i go on this like i do enjoy it still but we all know the original version way better so we need to go back to the original i i will say i was a little disappointed when i saw eric idol um somebody tweeted something oh, to yeah, we him talked about, about this yeah <laughs> yeah about about figment and he, he did not remember doing it at all so it's like no memory yeah. at all and he's like the whole like he's in that ride so much too like they film stuff he recorded stuff like so obviously yeah. he's never been on it yeah it's it's a little sad so yeah you know going back to the original and you know not you know i i enjoy eric idol but yeah i guess going back to Dreamfinder and all that made to be fair he is like 80 so like, he is, yeah yeah he's 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 a little yeah. older so he probably the memory is not probably great and it was it's pretty old at this point right i mean it's been a while right so okay so okay so you got you got uh um figment yeah. um okay so improve one ride um hmm okay this is this is i'm making this harder than it has to be um, cause I'm, I'm trying to think of it, like, uh, outside of figment, I'm trying to think of another ride that I feel is at a point where it's like desperately, I, oh, I can think of, I one. know I got two, I, I, no, I, I got one. Um, we need the poo. Yeah. That was Damon's too. Yeah. Y- yeah. It, it needs. So, so I, I think, um, my brother went on the one in Tokyo Disney. They need to go that direction with it. You know, go to that trackless. next level. Yeah. Trackless. And also, Again, upgrading the effects in the ride to something else. Like my brother said, there there was a really cool scene where where Tigger comes uh, in and is bouncing around, and it emulates or the, the whole room is designed that it makes like as he bounces, it's like the whole room oh, cool. shakes. So it feels yeah, like you're you bouncing know. with him, or does it feel like you're? Yeah, like it's causing it, earthquakes. Is that is that? No, it's 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 like it's like when uh, it's like when they did or in the books, like or not in the book, but like in yeah, the yeah. in the movie when he's bouncing on the pages of the book and the whole book kind of shakes. Mm, yeah, it's it's that, that kind of effect. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I I wonder if they even have enough room to do the track list. Like if that if that space that the ride is currently occupying is enough room to do that. Because if you've watched yeah. videos of that ride, that's a, it's in a pretty large space. I think. But um, but yeah, the, I agree. I, I think that's a good one. I also think Buzz Lightyear is a good one. I, that ride mm. is in terrible condition. Like, yeah, fair point. I I guess it's, yeah, it's bad. I I have weird rose colored glasses for Buzz Lightyear <laughs> because really? it's well because you know I know that like Toy Story Midway Mania does the same thing but better. But like you know, it's an upgraded version. But I don't know. There's something about you know Buzz Lightyear being one of those first. Interactive attractions, like yeah, yeah. I, I, I feel like if they could do it without changing fundamentally what it is, you know, yeah, just that's all the, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want a like, full overhaul. I, I want the ride to be the same. It's just it's in bad shape. Like it just needs like the ride vehicles need to be replaced. Like sometimes the, guns the spinning works. Love. Yeah, the yeah. guns are terrible. Like sometimes the spinning works. Sometimes it doesn't. Like it's just it's beat up right like it needs some love it needs like one of those year-long refurbishments that they yeah. do sometimes you know that, that's, that's a all fair I'm point that's all i'm saying yeah. Yeah. yeah so 
Okay. The, um, all right. Let's. Uh, James got in three questions in this in this uh, episode. James is on fire this episode. Yeah, and, and this last one. So so you know, let, let's talk another hard like uh, <laughs> hard hypothetical question. So James says, if you were in charge of building a fifth gate at WDW, would you consider gearing it towards older teens and adults? What would be the theme you would use in the park, and would you consider putting state of the art coasters in such a park? So basically like the, this goes back to what I was saying about, you know, are you competing with universal? Because that's what I feel that's, that's implying is if, if you were going to build a park and it was going to be tuned to more, you know, teens to adults, um, you've already got universal down the street. So what, what would this fifth gate be offering that you couldn't get elsewhere? would be my first i mean unless it's to directly compete with universal like you're saying right so yeah and 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 they might want to do that it it, i when i first read this i thought to myself okay yeah maybe they should make a park that's like a universal right like a universal kind of park but and and then you know but i was like but if they did that that kind of goes against the whole philosophy of like they want to build things that everybody can enjoy together, right? Like they, you in general, most of the rides that they have, there are rides that the whole family will enjoy together. That's why you don't see like the crazy thrill rides, you know, they have thrill rides, but it's not, they don't have anything super crazy. And that's because they want things that the whole family can do together. At the same time, I think to myself, okay, they've got four parks, right? They've got four parks with the stuff that the family can do all together, right? Maybe they make a fifth park and it's, you know, all thrill rides, really like high end thrill rides. Like they do like a, like a islands of adventure or like they do like a, you know, they do a universal park uh, because they got the four other parks. So if you're a family with young kids and they don't do the thrill rides, then you just avoid that one. Right. There's, there's four other parks to go to. Yeah. The, the, that's a fair point. I mean, it, you know, the, and, and I guess here, here's something to think about, you know, we, we've been sitting here bashing on star Wars and Marvel for the last little bit, but, yeah, yeah. um, I, I would argue that, you know, some of the stuff that they're doing with uh, with the Marvel stuff, like the, um, you know, WandaVision yeah. and Loki and yeah, Loki and Falcon and the Winter Soldier like yeah. that. It, the interesting thing is that these things, you know, Disney is producing these shows that are definitely targeted at an older audience. But um, if they just took those and put those into the park as they are they would suffer from the problem that you just mentioned, Tom, that, you know, the things that are in the parks need to be, um, they need to be something that the whole family can enjoy. Yep. So, so if they took, if they took something from Marvel that was a little bit more adult and a little bit more serious and then turned it into a ride, you end up with the same problem as uh, alien encounter. Yeah. Where the, you know, you've got, you've got families going in there thinking that, you know, you know, 90% of the rest of the park is fine, but then there's this one, this one item or this one attraction that, you know, is completely out of left field and not, you know, not really appropriate for younger kids. So, you know, maybe it, maybe it would make sense to have. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere else, like, you know, it's very clearly like, you know, this is the, you know, I don't know what you would call it, like Marvel slash, um, yeah, I like yeah, adult Disney, right? Like <laughs> yeah, but, you know what? Pleasure like, Island. I uh, yeah, Pleasure, Pleasure Island. Island. But right. Yeah. I do feel like Marvel is one of those few yeah. things and I actually feel like Star Wars kind of fits into this too that kind of appeals to most audiences, right? Like mm-hmm. you, you have adults, you have kids with Marvel, right? Cuz most of the Marvel movies are PG-13 and below. Right, you, or, you know, most of them. Right, I don't think there's any PG ones. I think they're probably all PG thirteen because the action stuff. Right, but yeah. you're 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 still attracting. And they uh, Damon posted in the group the other day, like there was a Disney Junior series with Spider Man. So like they are are making this appealing to everyone. Right, that's what they're trying to do. So I feel like Marvel is one of those ones that they could theoretically. And we were just talking about IP, but like if they were going to do a fifth gate, I mean what what IP exists right now that's more valuable than Marvel, right? Just in general, yeah. in general, what exists most more about, I mean, you can't even, I don't even think star Wars is, is at this point. Cause it's, it, there's so much more to Marvel. There's so many more characters and so many more things. Not that there aren't with star Wars. There's a lot with star Wars too. And, you know, you probably argue like Harry Potter or whatever, but 
maybe maybe i don't want to say jurassic park because jurassic park has been terrible forever (laughs) like (laughs) that last jurassic park movie was so bad but anyway (laughs) and i love jurassic park it's one of my favorite movies ever but anyway um you know these huge franchises like that i would say if you're gonna do it you could do some really cool things with like a marvel park you could do some cool locations you know you could throw like a wakanda section in there you could throw like there's a lot of cool things that you could do i feel like with a marvel park and you could make a lot of thrill rides there's a lot of you know there's a lot of cool things you could do with thrill rides with marvel properties so i i do think i do think it would be smart if they were to make a fifth gate to make something that's like like that a little more teen adult oriented where kids like younger kids could still be involved though too you know like they they still probably want to try to appeal to everybody yeah i i think the like, like i said the, the thing is is that if if you're going to go down the road of thrill rides and everything and, and you, yeah tying them to specific marvel ips um again I, I feel that there's still a there's still a boundary there like you know younger kids are not I I guess, you know, looking at something like WandaVision, like it had a few moments in it that were kind of like, okay, that's, that's really weird. or That's really like, like outside of, I guess what you would normally expect from a Disney show. Um, so I, I feel that, you know, if, if they did this where, you know, they had an entire park of just, you know, Hey, these are all the thrill rides and everything. The thing about that is that, um, you know, one there, everything's going to have height restrictions, right? Like, like all these roller coasters yeah, would be, yeah, you know, sure. it would be very clear. Like, you know, this is not like, it's like going to universal, like, like universal. I think they've done a good job of, you know, it's very clear. Like there's all these more extreme coasters and then they have a whole section that's like, Hey, you know, this is like Dr. Seuss. This is, yeah, yeah. this is the kid stuff. Um, If Disney was going to do this as a fifth gate, you know, it would have to be, it would have to be clearly defined. Like, like you said, it would have to be, you know, this is the, the adult section. This is the, the, you know, pleasure Island, you know, we sorry, all- <laughs> your, your six year old is not getting on this ride. Well, we all it, know, we all know how well pleasure Island worked out, which is to say not very well. <laughs> I, I will say that I, I have fond memories of going to the adventures club on my, uh, honey. That's boat, so that's the, only that was the most, of, yeah, yeah. that was the most amazing thing of that whole pleasure Island <laughs> with the adventures club. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. All right, so I think we we probably could do a whole show on that too. So I think yeah. what we said was good. <laughs> so I think we could probably move on to like news and stuff. But good questions yeah. this week, I have to say, very good questions this week. And yeah, absolutely, uh, yeah. And I, by the way, I just saw I was you know I was multitasking as you were talking, uh, and I, I was looking at our group, and you know Damon had posted the thing about him not being there, and and uh, longtime listener Francisco had mentioned I would like to see more guests on the show. That is something we are actively working on. Uh, especially we anticipate not having Damon as much this summer. Uh, I'll just be honest with everybody. Not because mm-hmm. he doesn't want to do the show. He's warned us ahead of time. He's got a lot of sports with his kids. It's hard, you know? Yeah. You know, things starting back up, he needs to focus on that. And we totally respect that. Absolutely. So there's probably going to be a little bit less Damon this summer. And uh, it, you know, we'll probably start to look to have more guest hosts come in, uh, hopefully from other podcasts. We want to bring other people in. Uh, and, and, you know, we could also at some point maybe have some listeners in and stuff like that. I think we need to get our old friend Ziggy back on and stuff like that. So we'll, yeah, we're, we'll, exactly. we'll do this stuff as we go. If you guys have suggestions of who you want to see, like other podcasts or, you know, specific people that you want on the show, just let us know. Email us, post it in the group. We will, we'll work on that. Um, it's not always the easiest booking guests, right? So, <laughs> uh, because the schedules and, and things like that. So, but we will definitely do more of that as we have Damon less this summer. So. All right, so DV, there's another DVC rumor. The last one turned out to be true, uh, which was the um, oh, what was it? The minimum points 150, one. Yeah, yeah, 150 so, points minimum. Yeah, yeah. So this rumor is that there are some rumored pricing uh, pricing. Uh, in, why can't I speak? Increase is coming on June 24th, uh, and and as part of that, Grand California is going to go over 300 uh, a point, which is crazy. Um, which is, but it's supply it, and demand though, right? It's super yeah, low it, supply, super high demand, right? Yeah. So, I was, was going to say it, it is crazy, but it's also not exactly. surprising yeah. because yeah, Grand Californian is, is prime real estate and very, very limited amount of rooms. And I, I think, um, I, I get the feeling that, you know, they, they know that there's people definitely looking at california right now because of the uh the new dvc tower that we've been talking about so 
yeah, I'm I'm not surprised that the, that Disney is doing this. You know, they, I mean, they're always doing direct price increases. They have been, you know, for as long as I think we've all been involved in this. So. Yeah, yeah, not surprising. It's it sucks, but not surprising. <laughs> and, and well, the interesting thing is these uh, increases are to Old Key West and Boulder Ridge and Grand Californian. So, uh, yeah. go, Old Key going from one sixty five to one seventy, Boulder Ridge going from one eighty six, what a random number, to one ninety. That feels a lot nicer. I like round numbers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so I mean, it's you know, it's small increases here, but I mean, we're looking at Grand California going from two ninety five to three ten. It's what this again. This is a rumor, so um, yeah, it's it's really really interesting to see that that's possibly going to happen. But again, rumor. So yeah, so you know, yeah, don't don't take it as gospel. But as don't. we saw, you know, the last time it came true, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Fairly reliable source, I think, on this, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. I, maybe we should do our other ad here and then we'll continue on other stuff here. Sure. Yeah. Why don't we do that? All right. All right. So our second ad is for Monera Financial. And you guys know Monera Financial. We talked about them many times. Uh, we talked earlier about DVC resale market. If you're looking for financing options for your DVC purchase, look no further than Monera Financial. Monera, a world of DVC company, is the industry leader for financing DVC resale contracts. Monera offers lending with no credit checks, often very low down payments, terms as long as 10 years, and no prepayment penalties. If you're thinking of purchasing a DVC contract, go and check out their quick online quote first. You might be surprised at just how affordable joining DVC could be. Go to monerafinancial.com or call 317-245-8800. And when you speak to them, be sure to let them know that Welcome Home sent you. All right. Big exciting news. <laughs> yeah. Fireworks. Fireworks are back. Yay. Yeah. Fireworks. Well, we talked about a rumor about this, what, like a, like a week or two ago that they were going to come back. And uh, that rumor turned out to be true. Look at that. The cast and, members actually knew what they were talking about for once. <laughs> and, and and I had said on that show that I was I would be surprised if they did it before July 4th. And they are. They are. Yeah. Ooh. So, well, so, July 1st for Disney World, July 4th on the dot for Disneyland, which seems uh, like a bad idea, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> right. But, but, like, that that's my thinking on this is that, you know, I get that they want to get it started again, but they're, they're, they're inviting all kinds of chaos but on the I, 4th. <laughs> I guess they feel like they can limit it based on those, like, the park reservations, right? So, like, if the yeah. park reservations are sold out, they know X amount of people are going to be in the park, right? So, and they're doing the same park reservations for Disneyland, so they can do it for both, right? Yeah, th- th- that's a fair point. It's, And I guess it's, it's less about people being in the park, but you'll just have, you'll have a lot of people, like, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be at any of the resort loop resorts on, uh, on, on 4th of July. Um, July 4th. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you're going to have people like just showing up there and just people standing around waiting for it. Right. Like it's. I, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But I, the, that's I think that's why, though, I don't know if you saw in this, they're not doing special fireworks for 4th of July. It's just going to be straight up happily ever after. So I'm thinking right. that's they're doing that just to kind of dampen some of it. But at the same time, there's pent up demand for this. So I don't think people are going to care that there's not special <laughs> yeah. ones. They just want to see fireworks. <laughs> like, you Yeah, know? That, that's going to be the thing is some people are just going to say, I just want to go. I don't care. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. But so. but I will say so. So I've you know, I, I've really refrained from trying to get into it about fireworks for a long time i am so happy that happily ever after is coming back like yeah. you have no idea <laughs> <laughs> well it's <laughs> here's a question do you, do you think that they're going to replace it do you think they're going to have a special show for the 50th that's so it's going to be only for a couple months now and then i mean you think they would have announced it by now but it feels weird that they wouldn't have a special fireworks show just for the 50th um it that's fair i i guess I can see them doing something similar to because, like you know, they have the fireworks for the the Halloween parties and yeah. stuff like that. I can see them doing something like that where it's you know they, maybe they have some after hours events. But again, the the other thing that's weird too is you know Disney is running Boobash still as well, yeah. so and they're not doing special fireworks for that either. Yeah, and and. um um, conversely, on the other side of that, I actually saw that that Universal is doing Halloween Horror Night. So Universal is going back to, you know, normal, but Disney is still sticking with a bit of a modified version of it. So yeah, yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if you know it may be a matter of Disney realized that 
you know, fireworks are very expensive. You know, you and I both sure. know this. Yeah. Um, it may have been a matter of, you know, with everything that's gone on, they may have had to do some, some cutting of things. Sure specific to the 50th and they may you know they probably had a plan for it and they probably had to scrap doing 50th fireworks or maybe they're just saying oh harmonious is going to debut for the 50th so epcot's going to have the 50th thing which doesn't make sense to me i feel like they need to have it yeah but because you know epcot is not celebrating its 50th it's not it's yeah (laughs) yeah it's not but that's i know they're promoting that as being as being, uh, you know, part of the part of the fifty. Oh, well, I guess they're not. It's just expected to premiere then. But that's a good point, though, too, to mention. So they're not doing like the Star Wars one at Hollywood Studios right now. So that's not happening. This is just that Magic Kingdom yeah. and Epcot. Epcot is going to be doing. Um, uh, what what is it called? Why am I blanking on it? Oh gosh, Epcot Forever. Which yeah, uh, yeah which was uh, I enjoyed it when I saw it. I, I saw the first performance of it. I, I think we talked about this. I, I just happened to be there for the very last performance of Illuminations and the first performance of Epcot Forever. It was a temporary show then. It's still a temporary show now. <laughs> so um, it's it, it's got some cool music to it because it's got like uh, some classic music from like the the different pavilions around Epcot. And and so if you really like Epcot, it's a, it's a cool show for you. Uh, whether they're going to do the kites or whatever, who knows? We're going to find out. The kites were a cool part of it, I will say. But with the lagoon filled with all the floats for harmonious i i don't know if they can do that but it feels like it's it feels like this isn't one of those things where they're delaying you know debuting harmonious because they want to wait for the 50th it more seems like harmonious is just not ready yet right like it's just they're still testing it and it seems like an absurdly complicated show and it's going to take a lot of time for them to get it ready so yeah, I, I, I think that's that's a lot of what we're seeing right now with all of these things is that, you know, things are coming back to normal and everyone's going, well, if it's going back to normal, why are we not just moving on to the next thing? And I think the thing to remember is that, you know, with things like, like Harmonious, it's not that through this last year, people have been actively working on it. You know, people still, yeah, yeah. You, you know, they had to cancel things, delay and all that. So yeah, it's probably hit a point where they, they realized that, you know, they can't, you know, you know, Harmonious is still going to be ready, you know, at least a few more months out. Sure. So in the meantime, hey, you know, they've got Epcot Forever already ready to go. So at the very least do that. As far as the boats go, I, you know, the boats were mainly around the edge of the yeah. lagoon. Yeah, like they, they, were. they weren't in the middle. So I'd, I, I feel like they could still do it. I, um, I think they probably can. Yeah. But but even yeah. without, I mean, I mean, the boats were definitely cool. Like, like the kites and everything were were, were pretty were neat. impressive. Yeah. Um, but you know, I th- I think even without it, like uh, you know, at, at, at this point, I'm I, I'm not going to be you know choosy about which fireworks I get. Like I just want fireworks. You just, yeah, you just want the fireworks. Show. Like who cares what it is, yeah. right? Now I I mean I'm excited to see Harmonious at some point, but at the same time, it's like I just want fireworks of some sort so this is great uh but yeah so expect that to come back which is great it's really exciting that all this is coming back and and it looks like happily ever after is going to be completely the same like it doesn't mean it doesn't look like they've had to make any cutbacks in that it's going to be the same show that it has been which is great you know because some stuff is opened up reopened modified and stuff like that it doesn't look like that's what's happening with this it's just you know the straight up show and then i i can't imagine how you could cut yeah anything and happily ever after yeah. like it's so it's so cued to the fireworks and the the projections it and, and and you know to be fair you know i i know it is a fireworks show but you know you know i i remember saying years ago that you know while doing more projection shows is that taking away from things um the one advantage of doing this is that you know when you know in situations like this where they had to stop it and then restart things it's not as bad to get it going again yeah. Because it's not at like it's I, easier to restart the projections. <laughs> I think the projections enhance the yeah. show, though. Like I don't feel like they have less fireworks on that show because they have the projections. In fact, I think they said they have it has the most fireworks they've ever done. So, you know, hmm. I, I you know I, I like that show. It's a great show. So, and then also at Disneyland, Mickey Mickey's Mix Magic, I guess, is the show there. Yeah, so I that one's, yeah. I've never heard of that one before, but it's, I think uh, it's fairly new, right? Yeah, it was uh, January 2019. So, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so, it incorporates projections, show lighting, and lasers on Main Street USA, um, Sleeping Beauty, and the facade, of, the facade of "It's a Small World," along with fire break, fireworks to celebrate the legendary Mickey Mouse. So, w- one interesting thing about Disneyland shows is that, um, so Small World is nowhere near the castle. 
<laughs> so okay. um so as if you just so, you're just somewhere else you can just see like the yeah 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 so so th- this is something that's kind of weird is that they'll do uh, and and I've I've seen this before um one so you know the whole you know Tinkerbell flying across um fly, flying flying yep. from the castle in in Disney World yeah. in Disneyland she actually comes from the Matterhorn Oh, that's because cool. the because the Matterhorn is actually way taller than the castle. Well, yeah, because the yeah, yeah the castle is like su- I don't want to say it's like not that tall, but it's not that it's, tall. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a lot smaller. Yeah, but then but then Small World is actually behind the Matterhorn, so it, it's almost like a secondary viewing area. But it it gives like it, it's basically its own show. So, so something think to think about there too is that you know. You know, we're used to, you know, like you're saying, you know, going to the hub and doing everything in the hub in Disney World. What if they, you know, you know, there is definitely a potential at some point they could say, hey, you know, we have a fireworks show going on, but it's like in three different places in the park. Yeah, no. I, I, yeah, that's yeah. that's interesting that they're doing it that way. I, I, I'm also thinking to myself, like, well, I think part of this is staffing, though, too. Right. So, like, they're still trying to bring cast members back and then train them and hire new ones. Like, it's that's a lot of the, the reason why things are slowly reopening. But I was thinking to myself, I wonder when, like, Fantasmic's coming back. Like, what's what's the hold up on that one? Right. Like, because at this point, that's a huge theater. Like, why can't you bring that one back? That's a lot of actors, if you think about it. Oh, no, that's true. And that could be part of it, too, right? Like, some of these people have probably gone on to... I mean, I'm assuming have gone on to do other things, right? Like, and so yeah. they either have to find new ones and train them and get them to where they need to be or whatever. But it's just... And also, you know, besides that, just all of the cast members working in that stadium. There's, a, I mean, there's a ton of people that work that show, right? And then also, it's... it's an, I'm sure that's an expensive show to run, too. So they got to, you know, make sure that it's, it's full and that people are going. I, I remember something uh, years ago. I remember uh, lights motor action like there would the cast members sometimes would go around and try to get people to go to the show and one of the cast members told me something like every show costs like thirty thousand dollars or something like that so they try to get, i forget how much it was it was probably more than that but it, it, that's why they tried to get they were like actively going out to get people to come <laughs> so that's that's a good point i guess you know we're we're kind of uh we're kind of spoiled when it comes to these shows that you know they it, it's they're not by default an extra ticketed yeah. show but yeah you know even even the shows that you know like phantasmic and whatnot that are set up in a you know in a theater there's still a certain amount of money that it costs just to run that show and yeah if if, if, if there's five people in the theater like how much money is disney would disney be losing on something like that <laughs> yeah i mean i tend to believe that like if they reopened it next week it would it, the stadium would be full right like every oh, night yeah. for a while right but I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, Disney obviously knows how many people show up. Like back before pre pandemic, how many people showed up on a, on a uh, you know in a given day, and how many of those people stuck around for Fantasmic, right? So maybe they're looking at it now and they know how many people are showing up a day, and they you know know what percentage of that crowd would typically stick around for Fantasmic, and they're like, well, that's not going to work. You know, I I don't know. May, I'm just guessing, but yeah, I, I'm I'm just waiting for that one to come back to. Yeah, I guess if you know if if on a normal day it was you know eighty percent of of crowd or eighty percent capacity of the park, but then you know Phantasmic was meant to hold like thirty percent. Yeah. But then you know right now they're at fifty percent capacity, so that you know they're they're assuming that you won't get, you know that yeah, yeah. that equivalent amount or not the it's not even equivalent. It would be like you know still getting that that same volume of people that you would get when it was at regular capacity. Yeah, so. exactly. Hmm. Exactly. So anyway. Yeah. So I'm excited. I, I'm glad the fireworks are coming back. It's, it's great news. And it seems like everything's really getting back to normal. And, you know, it, while some things will be slow, other things will be fast. Like a lot of the distancing, the mass stuff, like all that stuff has been very quick. Right. But at the same time, some of it is going to take more time. Right. So reopening certain things is going to like we're talking about here. It's going to take more time because just because of the human beings that need to operate these things. You know, and, and I think, it, you know, it's for me, this has given some good perspective on really how complex yeah. some of these things actually are. Absolutely. Um, you know, go, going back to Jeremy's point about, you know, do we, do we always look behind the curtain on stuff? Um, you know, sometimes like for stuff like this, it's like, yeah, you know, there, you, this isn't just something that, you know, magically happens. And although, you know, I can sit there and watch Fantasmic and just be absorbed in that moment. But when you really think about it, you know, as we're talking here, there's, 
you know, probably a couple of hundred people behind the scenes, you know, between the character actors, you know, people running pyrotechnics, the, the yeah. people working in the, in the theater, like, it's crazy when you really think about it. Oh yeah, it's 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 yeah. a ton of people. I mean, all the ushers, you know, like you said, all the people working the pyrotechnics, the show director. I mean, there's a ton of people that work on that stuff. It's <laughs> you know, and it's all included in the price of your ticket. So it has to be worth it for them to do it, you know? And so I, I get it. I mean, I get why certain things are not reopened. I, it makes sense. But I mean, it's it's all going to come back soon and it's all going to I mean, it's it's slowly coming back, right? And another thing that's coming back, good transition, Animal Kingdom Lodge reopening on August 26th. Look at that. We got an opening date for right. Animal Kingdom. Look that except for all of us folks who could just stay there anytime we wanted because of dvc <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a good point it's yeah opening i'm sorry i'm guess yes I, i'm gonna throw that one out there you know you know for all the the times that we talk about you know you know blue card privileges and everything you know everyone who has a dvc contract right now you still had access to you all did. these places that have been closed well, you know, right. it's it's interesting to me because I've seen a couple of people in some of the DVC groups comment about DVC not being full capacity. It's like, no, they they are. Uh, all the rooms have been open since they reopened the resorts, like because they, they have to be right. Like, yeah, it, there are some people that for whatever reason think that like the D, like you know the DVC inventory at each hotel was like fifty percent. It's like no, 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 no. Like every room that was available was available. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's it's a condo association. Yeah. They can't just arbitrarily do that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And plus, they need availability. I mean, Damon was was talking to us earlier. He was trying to find a couple of days this year. I mean, availability is not... It's there's tight. Not, it's yeah. tight. There's no availability. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, I, I was actually... I was looking at that. Yeah, Damon was asking... Uh, while he was at a swim meet, he was messaging us and saying, hey, you know, can you look and see if the, any of these days are available? And he was like... He said, you know, I don't care where. Like, like yeah. he was like anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, like anywhere at the parks, Hilton Head, Vero Beach. And, you know, I, I was looking at it and I'm like, you know, you can find like one night here, one night there kind of thing. Yeah. But most of it was wait list, which. Well, yeah. And this yeah. is like when I see people, because I, I see this all the time. I'm in a lot of DVC groups. I see people complaining about the 50% borrowing rule. It's like. This is why the 50% borrowing rule exists, guys. Like, there's no availability. We can't bring more points into the system from next year when there's already no availability for this year. You know, like that, yeah, that if, just makes the situation worse if you're able to borrow it, all your points. If they didn't limit it, and, you know, unfortunately, it's a matter of, yeah, you know, some people are going to, you know, be forced to let points expire or rent them out or whatever. But if they didn't do this for the next three years, we would be dealing with no availability. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can get myself a week at a Grand Villa next year. I think I'm going to make it happen because I have so many points. <laughs> yeah. uh, even after that little mini trip I took, like, I've just got way too many points. I, I mean, I think I talked about I've talked on the show. I was even thinking about selling one of the contracts because I just have too many points. I just don't need them. Um, so anyway, uh, along with other things that are changing, single rider lines starting to come back, which is cool if what you're is- a single rider. <laughs> What is this strange thing? Single rider. I know, like, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like there's a single rider on that many rides. Was it like Test Track, like uh, Rock and Roller Coaster, um, the Smuggler's Run, right? Yeah. Test Track, Rock and Roller Coaster, Smuggler's Run. I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, uh, there's not that, that many no, things that have single rider. Space Mountain doesn't have it. Why doesn't Space Mountain have single rider? I don't know. Probably should. Yeah. Tower should. Terror? Does Tower Terror? Um, no, it doesn't. I feel like they should too. Yeah. Yeah. Even, uh, sorry, did you say rock and roller coaster? I did, yeah, rock and roller coaster. Yeah, rock and roller coaster. Yeah, it's a rock and roller coaster. Okay, what else? Oh, oh, Everest does. Everest has one. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's all I can think of. I've I've actually never used the single rider at Everest. I should do that. It's good for people like my wife who will ride things that I won't so she can just hop in the single rider line. So my son and I will do it like, like we'll get there first thing in the morning and we'll, and we'll ride it like four or five times in a row. But, um, yeah, I mean, we could like, we could definitely make use of it. The, the nice thing is, is I, I'm at a point where my son doesn't need to be next to me on the ride. Like if we just want to ride rides, we can do the single rider thing. So yeah. Cause you guys yeah. don't need to be next to each other. It's nice to be next to each other, but you don't have to be. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's not like when he was, when he was younger, where it was like, I got to make sure he's buckled in and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. 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 No, it's, but no, now you got me thinking about it. I think there's actually more single rider at Disneyland than there is at Disney World. Hmm, interesting. Cause I, I know, I know Matterhorn definitely has single rider. Um, try to think what else. 
I'm sure we've missed some stuff in here, but that's yeah. fine. Like, it, I'm sure we there's some rides we missed, and that's fine. I'm trying to think if there's Reed, even Reed any Springs has it. Is there any single rider at does, at uh, Magic Kingdom? I don't think there is. Not that I can think of. Pirates needs a single rider. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they should have one on like Big Thunder. Like any roller coaster should have yeah. a single rider. Right? Yeah, th- th- that's a good point. Like, yeah, why don't the roller coasters have single rider? Yeah, all roller coasters should just have a single rider lane. Like they yeah. just they just should. Uh, so yeah, anyway, so those are starting to reopen. So that's good news too. Um, <laughs> I put this on here cause I wanted to have a conversation about just, just this, the, the, the next thing I have on here. Do you want to read it? I, <laughs> the, the sen- you're talking about Sensi teaming up with Disney world resorts for a new experience in fantasy land. Yeah. So the reason I put this on here, cause they're a candle company, right? And they make licensed Disney products. But the reason I put this on here, and I think we did this a couple shows ago, but like favorite smell. Yeah. Like, what's your favorite smell at Disney? And I think we did this a couple podcasts ago. Because I think I said uh, mine was, was the, the ice cream shop on Main Street. Yeah. And, and I think I... So I, I, I mentioned Pirates is definitely one of those smells. But so... I'm also okay, laughing so, at this, though, too, because I'm like, what in the world is there creating rich storytelling opportunities through fragrance? Like, what is that going to be? <laughs> like, well, so so here here's something interesting to think about is that... Um, you know, not just the, the very prominent smells that you get, like walking by the confectionery or whatever, but all throughout the parks, Disney does pipe smells oh, yeah. into different areas. And, and, and it's not always meant to be overbearing and like, like hitting you in the face. Yeah. Like even, um, a, a, another good example is, you know, walking into the Polynesian lobby. It's, uh, there's a hibiscus scent in there which you know is it's amazing like it, it smells so good but it 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 doesn't smell like artificial or like somebody manufactured it. it's just yeah. like it's it's almost like somebody's standing there waving a bouquet of flowers next to the entrance <laughs> yeah 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 so so you know i i can see where you know they're definitely talking about this it's just you're right it's funny how you know they're, they're advertising this as you know there's going to be a new experience in Fantasyland specifically about smelling stuff that this to me is kind of the same as um do you remember that drew carey thing oh yeah yeah in studios yeah, yeah i remember that yeah where where it, it was all about sound right yeah, yeah it was like the sound went in there and yeah and to me it kind of seems like the same kind of thing is it's like you know they're focusing on just one thing you know and i get that you know sensi is a fragrance company so they they want to do that but it, it, it i feel like it falls flat when it's not a combination of you know, the smells, the sights, the sounds, like everything playing together, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, do you have any candles of Disney scents like in, around your house? Because I know a lot of people will buy um, like the Pirates one or they'll buy, uh, you know, the... So we, we we use the wax melts. Um, like I, we don't like actually having candles in the house. Like I, because I, I would forget to put them out and it would start a fire or something. <laughs> um, but we, but yeah, we, we've used the wax melts and yeah, like, like my wife has actually, you know, she's bought like the main street bakery ones and, um, we've actually gotten the Polynesian sense, you know, the hibiscus and everything. Um, you know, exactly for that reason that, like you said, is, you know, you know, we, um, sometimes like to just have it there because, yeah. you know, we can't get back to the parks and at least being able to smell it invokes some memories that we had of our last trip. Right. I mean, let's be honest. What they announced here is probably them just putting a candle shop in Fantasyland somewhere, right? Or just having their candles available for sale somewhere in Fantasyland, right? That's pretty much what it's going to be. <laughs> you don't think they're going to do an entire ride of like? <laughs> it, it, yeah. it would be a ride. The you know, ride like when you smells. go through, you know, when you go through the perfume section at a department store, yeah, yeah. and they're like trying to like blast you with the the samples. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine if they did like an entire ride of that, where it was like you just go around a corner and there's like different smells getting blasted at you <laughs> would be the worst that'd thing. be the yeah this, uh, it would be like scarier than uh than extraterrestrial was for children yeah that's <laughs> that people, terrible. Would, people would come off nauseous but not the reason that you think yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> can i pull a daemon for this next one like that i All don't right, really care about it. this <laughs> yeah okay well uh, then you know what let's skip it well, we could just say, look, there's a yeah. rumor that Marathon Weekend is returning in 2022. So hooray for all you runners out there. 
uh looks like uh looks like a marathon weekend's gonna be back for next year so i guess it was some dates were shown on the disney website but they're not there anymore which is why i'm po- I'm saying this is a rumor because somebody on twitter posted a screenshot of the website but who knows if that's real or not so right i'm calling it a rumor but anyway this listed dates between uh january 6th and 12th so who knows we'll have to see yeah and sorry me and obviously me and tom are not runners so yep. not a runner no. yeah yeah not gonna do it anyway Moving on. <laughs> bacon cupcake. <laughs> yeah. We go from talking about running to bacon cupcake. Yeah. So so specifically uh, a Father's Day bacon cupcake yeah. at the Polynesian Resort. This this is hitting that nexus of like everything. Everything I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's at the Polynesian. It's bacon. You know, it's for Father's Day, so I, I'm sure we can find a dad joke in there somewhere. Of course. It's a vanilla cupcake uh, like, with cream cheese icing, candied bacon, salted caramel filling with candied bacon on top. This sounds amazing. Yeah. Like, and it, it's funny that they put it at the Polynesian of all places, but I mean, I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. Um, it does feel a little and, random. It feels a little random. Yeah. And does it make yeah, it any less cheese, delicious sounding, though? <laughs> cream cheese, bacon, and salted caramel. Yeah. That's, There's like a big uh, piece of of bacon like sticking out the top, I think. Oh my god. Sure is. <laughs> it just looks Oh, oh no, wait, that's he, just chocolate. He, I think that's just chocolate. No, that's the candied bacon. Is it? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm yep. I'm in for and this. It, I, I wanna I wanna and it eat says this right dad now. on it. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna I wanna I'm gonna drive down to the Polynesian right now and eat this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, it just looks so good. Yeah. I love salted caramel too. I'm all about salted caramel. Do you I say mean, caramel yeah, or caramel? Is it caramel or caramel? I never know. Car- mm, I say both. I feel like I say depending. both. Depending. Yeah. 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 I, I don't think about it too much. You don't think yeah. about it too hard? These it, are things it, I think about, Trevor. It, it, it's, you know, yeah, g- give me give me caramel and, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm already eating it. I'm not thinking about how to pronounce it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer salted or non-salted? Like, do you, are you a salted caramel? Because I like salted caramel. I just have a sweet tooth in general. I, so. I I'm not that picky. I mean, I, I actually, sorry. I, I'll say, you know, if, if given the option for salted caramel, I will, I will definitely take it. But it's, I've never been in a position where they're like, "Do you want salted or unsalted?" I'm just like, "That's true. caramel." Yeah, it's yeah, it's either it, you just have one <laughs> option. Like, there's usually not two options yeah. there. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap this show up. I think we did a pretty good job right. this time. I, I, you know, I, who needs Damon, right? <laughs> <laughs> we gave you a Damon moment. We said we didn't care about the marathon stuff, you know. So we got yeah. that. So, but we, but you know, to be fair, we didn't we didn't like lightning round a whole bunch of subjects at once. That's which, true. Yeah, That's true. yeah. That's, we, but, we need to get like a Damon impersonator on to do like a uh, do do him while he's gone. <laughs> maybe uh, I, I don't know. I guess if if one of our listeners thinks they can fill in for Damon while he's gone, I I think that's a bit of a tall order because it Damon. Is. Damon is admittedly one of the most unique people that I know. So I, uh, I'll say this that I, I think about this a lot. Like, I, I guess you and I both know Damon now for over four years, right? Yeah. I never know what Damon's going to, re- how Damon's going to react to anything. Like I, you would think by now that I would like, okay, here's an article. Damon's going to like this. And I think that all the time. And I put things in the show specifically that I think he's going to like. And then, and then he'll be like, I don't care about this. What do I care about? And then there's something I'm like, Damon's not going to care about this. It's stupid. He's going to call it stupid. And I'm not going to put it in. And then he's like, oh, let's talk about that. It's just, like literally it's always the opposite of what, I've, of what I think is going to happen. So he's an impossible human being to, to, to predict. So <laughs> it's a tall order. Anyway, let's I, wrap I, up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think it's a good thing. I, I think it keeps us on our toes. Like, like you pointed out, but anyway, yeah, let's, uh, so, um, yeah, talking about wrapping up, if you guys want to reach out to us, you can always find us at welcomehomepodcast at gmail.com. We obviously get uh, a lot of listeners' questions through there. We get uh, great stories from you guys, uh, just, you know, general comments. You know, if, if you guys just want to chat, we we appreciate all that. You know, we, we love interacting with you guys. We think that, you know, this community is, is a large reason why we've kept doing this as long as we have. So... You know, make sure you guys uh, reach out to us if you have something you want to share or have a question. Um, outside of that, you you know, the next biggest place to post questions, if if you haven't joined it yet, you should join the uh, the Facebook group, which is Welcome Home Disney Waitlist. We do try to post a uh, a question thread in there every week so you can 
you guys can get your questions out there, which do get onto the show. Um, also, if you want to follow us on Facebook, you can follow us as Welcome Home Podcast. Uh, we're also on YouTube and Instagram. YouTube is also Welcome Home Podcast. Instagram is Welcome Home Picks. Uh, make sure you follow those uh, channels because whenever we go to the parks, you know, we try to post on Instagram, um, you know, add things on YouTube. We'll add stuff on Facebook as well. Um, you know, obviously now that things are getting back to normal, uh, uh, you know, Tom's already gone to the parks once, uh, as the rest of us get going back to the parks, uh, uh, we're hoping to get those channels more and more interactive. Uh, last but not least, if you, yeah, if you guys want a, uh, you know, if you want a mug or a, a t-shirt or a mask or anything like that, you know, you, you want to support the, the show, make sure you go to store.welcomehomepodcast.com and you can, uh, we've got a bunch of great things there to pick out. Um, just a side note. So, um, I know we, (laughs) hmm? Uh, yeah, I I was going to mention, so, so we've been, we've been working behind the scenes on, uh, the haunted river country shirt that we've been talking about and, uh, we've, we've hit a few snags with it. So we're having to just, um, uh, stop and reset. So, you know, it is coming still. We're just, uh, trying to make sure that we get, something out to you guys that we are happy with. So we, yeah. we want to make sure that, you know, it's, you know, it's something that, that we would be proud to wear so that we can, you know, give it to you guys. Yeah. So, we, we have one shot at this, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that exactly. it's, it looks good and, it, and it's right. And, and, you know, we, we uh, obviously have the design, but there's more to it than that. You know, we want to put other stuff on the shirt besides just the design. So there's, we got to figure that out and we're working on it. So I, and I know we've we, been teasing this forever and I promise it eventually will happen, but we're, we're working on it. Yeah. We, we thought we had it and then yeah, some technical limitations um, stopped us from doing what we wanted to do. So yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're like, like I said, you know, you know, stay tuned for that. It is still coming. Hopefully you guys will, will want it once we put it out there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, last but not least, you know, if, uh, as you guys are listening to us on iTunes or Spotify or any of those channels, make sure you, you are leaving us a review. Um, you know, like Tom said, we've gotten some, some great five-star reviews. We would like more five-star reviews. It, it does help more people find the podcast. It helps, uh, um, it, it helps it, it, not to say that we care about the rating, but it does help the rating. And to us, the, the important thing it. there, yeah, <laughs> well, well, we care about it from the point of view of, you know, yeah. not just being number one, but, you know, we want to get it out. We want to get the podcast out there to share with people. So, you know, the best thing you can do to help us out is give it a rating just so that we can, uh, make it visible to more people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Welcome Home Podcast so you can be reminded every time we release a new episode. You can find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, just about any place you can find podcasts. You can find us. Uh, just a reminder to our listeners, Welcome Home Podcast is for entertainment only. We are not employed by the Walt Disney Company, and as such, any and all opinions we express on the show are our own. So please consult a DVC representative or Disney cast member for more information about anything we talked about today. Huge thank you to DVC Resale Market and Monero for sponsoring this episode and being a long time friends and longtime sponsors here we, we appreciate their support so please check them out uh join us next time for more disney parks discussion of course more dvc talk we hope to see you all real soon this is skipper albert awal the voice of the jungle signing off from welcome home podcast on the dvc when we hit a chair how she can cut is no man's affair I looked around from pole to pole, found her in a sugar bowl.